have here is the 40 and a half or scrub plane. It's a unique and somewhat misunderstood tool in that in modern uses, people will flatten and level, level boards that are too wide for their joiner. Uh, most joiners in a home shop are six to eight inches wide. And if you've got very wide stock, you can't flatten one side. It's really important that one side of your stock is flat before you run it through a planer. If it's not, then you won't get a true reference for the, the finish side on the top side. Uh, the scrub, because of its length, is not really as effective for flattening stock as it is for dimensioning in width. And as a traditional use, it would be more of a carpenter's tool than a cabinet maker's tool. If you've got to take a quarter of an inch or a half an inch off an eight foot long stud, it's going to be a lot faster and easier with the scrub plane than it is with a handsaw. If you do get some tear out in the material that you're trying to flatten, something like the tooth blade in the number 62 low angle jack plane is going to let you clean that surface up, get rid of the tear out, but also the, the jack plane is the tool that would traditionally have been used in a cabinet maker's shop for leveling the surface of a board. Put a heavy camber on it so it has a blade more similar to the scrub and you've got more bearing surface so you can flatten and level. But if, you've, if you're going to be doing the roughing with your power planer, then the scrub plane lets you very effectively level out one side before going to the planer. At its heart, this is just a fun plane to use. So let's put it to work. It's a good idea to work at a diagonal, about a 45 degree angle. That way you're removing material along the length of the stock as well as the width. So you can be leveling in both directions. Uh, once you've gone up and back from one direction, come from the other direction and do the same thing. Create a crosshatch pattern. Uh, if you're noticing that you're getting a significant amount of tear out, but you still need to take that, that area down aggressively, work di directly across at 90 degrees. And that'll let you uh, take, not get as much tear out because rather than getting in underneath the grain fibers, you're cutting across the grain fibers. So you don't get the same kind of engagement and tear out that you'd get. You can, if everything's going smoothly, you can go lengthways as well to make sure you're level in the length. I haven't gone quite as deep as I can because I wanted to see how it was going to perform in the material. So I'm going to bring that blade down just a little bit deeper. I'm working at a diagonal so that I spread out the, uh, the removal in both the length and the width. I've gotten some areas of t heavy tear out here. I may find that I want to go at a 90 degree across that area to get to not get quite as much tear out. Looks like I can go a little bit heavier. I went up and back from one direct diagonal. I'll go up and back from the other. As soon as I'm getting a cut all the way through, that's about as flat as I can get the piece in with this particular plane. If I want to get a flatter surface, I need to switch to a larger plane like the jack. I've gone back across there from the other direction, because if this piece is cutting more cleanly, you may actually want to use this textured surface as an effect in something like a door panel. In these areas where the tear out happened badly, that's where I might go to something like the tooth blade to clean it up or working at a 90 degree across. You may notice that along the edge here, there was some pretty heavy tear out. 
That's always going to be a problem when you're working with, with the scrub plane. So you don't want to be doing it in boards that are finished dimension across the width. If it's finished dimension in length, that's not as much of an issue. But across the width, you'll almost always have this, this tear out off, this, off the side. When you do have a finished side, something that's going to be run through the planer, or you're going to finish it off by hand, you can figure out the final dimension width-wise that you want, or thickness-wise that you want, by using a marking gauge. Set that to either the exact dimension you want to be, or the thinnest portion of the stock. Transfer that mark around the board, and if there's a, a significant amount of material, you may want to go to the scrub plane to bring this other side down to finish. Or you may just be running it through the power planer. We've talked about the more modern uses for the scrub plane. Let's look at the uh, more traditional techniques. And if you're trying to uh, put on a piece of molding onto a wall or around a door, rarely is the wall going to be flat. It's, there's usually some bumps and unevenness there. And so the, to get the molding to fit flush to the wall, the uh, easiest thing to do is just place it up against the wall and inscribe a line that represents any unevenness that might be present on the wall itself. Uh, once you've got that, come back with the plane and find the, the deepest area that you need to remove material. And starting there, work your way out following along the lines. If you can do it, take one last cleanup pass through to establish the bottom bottom line point. I think you'll find that because of the length of the plane it's easy to to get a much deeper cut than you might have thought in that you can follow deeper deeper contour points. Uh, if the plane was longer then it would be referencing off more high spots on the on the length of the molding and you wouldn't be able to get quite as deep. Another of the traditional uses for the scrub is dimensioning in width, like we mentioned earlier. If I scribe a line about a half an inch deep along this edge, it's going to take me a while to get that brought down with a handsaw. I can get it very, very quickly with the scrub plane. Remember, as you're working this down, it's not going to be a finished surface when you're finished. You'll go back over this with another plane, like a jack plane. Keep going down until you get just short of the line. and then you'll finish off with the, uh, with the other tool. You may find that you want to leave this finish in there. If you've ever uh, looked at the studs on an old house, you'll see a surface some, very much like this that's, uh, that came from, probably from a scrub plane. Makes really nice bracelets too. The curved blade on the scrub can make sharpening this tool seem a little bit intimidating. 